Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to this video on using solid state technology for inrush current limitation. The focus of our video is our brand new evaluation board, the STAVAL SCR 002 V1. Let's start by looking generally at inrush current when you start an AC DC converter. At the startup phase, the converter has a surge current that can be 10 times higher than the nominal current, as you can see on the graph, which can of course damage components in the circuits. So each AC DC converter should comply with the IEC 610033 standard that specify the requirements to limit the RMS current at the startup phase of the application. The STEVAL SCR 002 V1 Evaluation Board implements an advanced design for inrush current limitation using STA semiconductor technology. This board is paired with the Nucleo F03R8 development board to drive the current limitation board. Both boards are available on st.com and from major distributors. Please remember that this demonstration involves high voltages and you must refer to the setup and safety instructions in user manual UM2948 before you try this system in your own lab. Now, let's get started. First, we connect the AC line and neutral to the correct pins on the evolution boards. Then, we connect the load in our test. The load consists of a resistance and capacitor to represent those of 1 kW power supply. We then connect the evolution board to the Nucleo development board, which provides the enable signal for the STR driver. The microcontroller on the Nucleo board must be loaded with the firmware to provide the driving signal according to the application and load you want to test. We complete the setup by connecting the ground pin of the Nucleo to the ground pin of the evolution board and then powering the Nucleo through an isolated USB power supply. We use a high voltage differential probe on the enable input to visualize the driving signal of the thyristor on the board. Another high voltage differential probe is used to visualize VAC and the current probe is used on the AC line to monitor the line current during startup. This board can be used in two different ways that we will be presenting, the bypass topology as well as the smart inrush topology. In bypass topology, current flows through the NCC during the inrush current limitation phase. This innovative design only requires one driving signal from the MCU, so when the capacitive load is charged, the MCU raises the enable signal high and the SCRs bypass the NCC. The SCR driver configuration with triac and two small diodes ensures correct current distribution to the thyristors. Thanks to this driver, there is no need to sense the VAC polarity as one thyristor is used at each half period. Our oscilloscope shows the power loss across the NCC during the initial current limitation phase. While capacitor is being charged, the enable signal remains low and the gate of the thyristor is not driven. Once the capacitor is charged, the enable signal goes high and the NCC is bypassed as gate driving begins. The advantages of this method include the fact that the SCR driver reference is common to ground DC bus, so no installation required between the MCU and the SCR driver. Only a single MCU input without current buffer is required. Also, higher reliability than mechanical bypass relays with the same power efficiency is guaranteed. Now, let's examine the innovative smart inrush topology. For this topology, we remove the NCC from the evolution board and we use a pulse DC signal to control the enable pin. Inrush current limitation in this topology requires a feedback circuit to determine the zero voltage crossing points of the AC main. The circuit shown here presents one way to achieve this, and it is connected to a GPO pin of the Nucleo board microcontroller. The circuit generates a square signal synchronized with the AC main's voltage and the microcontroller stores the frequency of the zero crossing of the AC main. Now that we can sense the zero voltage crossing frequency, we control the SCR by augmenting delta T at each half AC line cycle. We can set the delta T via software according to the load. Every half period, we increment the gate pulse duration. The signal is represented in yellow. Inrush current mainly depends on the converter capacitor and the load, and we set the delta T accordingly. The red signal represents the smooth DC charging thanks to the inrush current limitation. The line current is in green and the AC voltage is in blue. The advantages of this topology include lower power consumption than bypass method during the inrush current limitation phase. Also, only a single MCU pin is required. 
It is a full solid state solution with reduced bill of material, as no NTC or relays are required. And it is a software based in rush current limitation solution with accurate and easy current limitation adjustment. And the system startup speed can be configured by the user. To sum it up, our evaluation setup shows how designer can use thyristor instead of passive components and electromechanical relays to manage inrush currents. The two different topologies you can try with the board offer high reliability and a series of other benefits that will help you effectively manage inrush current limitation in your application. Our evolution board STEVAL STR 002V1 allows up to 1 kW, but you can raise the power level by using higher current rated devices. The product used in this board is TN1605H, which is also available in 800V. This latter is a part of the 800V thyristor family that we are working on developing even more currently, available in SMD and through-hole packages. For more information on the TN1605H high-temperature STR thyristor featured on this board and all our products, please visit our products page on sc.com. You can also visit our dedicated page for the evolution board and be sure to download the EN4606 application notes for detailed information on inrush current limitation driving strategies. Mm -hmm.